Hello everyone. If you have a bunch of turnouts that you want to control through LCC like this, or if you still have one of these NCE switch eight and like that it can be controlled by DCC and you don't want to deal with a bunch of nodes and daughter boards, stay tuned. We got some for you. Hey everyone, welcome back to another installment of the LCC channel. Finally, getting back into the swing of things here. It's taken a while, but we are getting back into the mode of producing some more videos. Hey, for today, I want to uh, share with you a new product out of Canada. It's from Snowball Creek Electronics, and it's their LCC Slow Motion Turnout Controller X8. And basically, it takes, uh, they have eight outputs, for their uh, slow motion controller. Notice that there are no daughter boards here. It's an all-in-one. You're gonna do a walk through this as well as some of the specifications on it, uh, but it's a pretty cool product. Okay, so let's take a little tour around the board. Uh -huh. We'll start on the left side here where you have your standard LCC connections. Uh, this also provides power. As noted, there's a 50 milliamp load to run the circuitry inside the board. It can also support the loads, where it says plus loads, so you could actually power the turnouts. But you may have cases where you cannot get power to a particular part of the layout, and you might want to just feed the turnouts from the LCC feeder. Does have DCC input as well. Wow. Um, we'll talk a little bit more of that later, but a couple of the cables or a couple of the wires on the LCC bus carry the DCC signal and this board will respond to them. It's pretty cool. So that way, if you want to throw a turnout through your DCC system, this will recognize that and respond accordingly. Blue and gold buttons plus the blue and gold lights. Those are you know, standard LCC um, features. You don't really need them to operate the unit, but they are there for your use. They also have a reset. Uh, button right here. Over here we have the eight points for uh, your slow motion switch machines and above each pair there's a green indicating light uh, denoting uh, the state of those. So very easy to wire out. Again, there's no daughter board on this. This is set up so that you could throw all your turnouts directly from an LCC node. Um, I find that really useful, especially if you've got a yard or something like that where you just have a lot of turnouts to throw. Okay. Working our way around, there's a power LED, and then there's a selector jumper here, whether you want to power the turnouts from your power supply here, this uh, connector, the barrel connector, or else off of the LCC. Again, here's your barrel connector, 12 to 28 volts. It is DC, so you have to have DC to power all this, but it's a pretty wide range, so a lot of different adapters would work for this. Hmm. And okay. then one last feature, if I can find it here, there's this little um, health diode. It's kind of a neat idea. Basically, it flashes at a certain rate when everything's okay and the board is happy. And then it has a different rate or it'll stop flashing when there's an anomaly. Also, when DCC is detected, it'll have a different flash rate. So I kind of a neat idea. It. Let's jump onto the computer to take a look at how this thing looks when you configure it. Doing all the configuration through LCC, of course, it's a great way to work. Open up your configuration dialog, and guess what? Here's your standard configuration screens. ID shows the equipment. By the way, this one has a software or firmware upgrade that's out there. I might do a segment on how to do that. Okay. Node ID, very much like most other nodes, you can name it, and you can uh, put any description in, you in, in there that you'd like. Of course, that persists throughout your layout. You can always track it that way. On the outputs, and this is set up really for just outputting to your stall motor types. Uh, that's really what it's geared for. You have your default event IDs. Of course, you can go ahead and put your own event IDs in there, or else you can use the defaults, right? Um, if you are using DCC, here's where you go ahead and put that information. So whatever DCC accessory number you'd like, you can go ahead and plug that in there, and it'll respond by defaults, of course, one, two, three, and so forth or for the different um, outputs, but you can make it however you'd like for your layout. Startup control, 
How does the switch behave on startup? Does it go by default to the normal position, the reverse position, or whatever the last state was? There might be places where you want that, so you don't end up uh, messing up a particular configuration in a yard throat, for instance, that you don't want to have messed up when you restart the layout. So you can go ahead and choose that there. And then control type, this is kind of neat. How is this control output controlled? So you can do LCC only, DCC only, DCC and LCC, um, LCC using custom event IDs, or you disable the output. So it gives you a lot of choices. So this is really the heart of where the configuration is set up. Um, there's some global stuff in here. Should this no translate DCC switch messages to well-known LCC messages requires a reboot. So what really this would do is that you could have a DCC signal trigger an LCC command of, or an event in your LCC system. Right now it's set up for disabled, but you can enable it. And then finally, as I mentioned, there's the firmware version. I'm pretty excited about this. I hope that it is a, a great seller for the folks at Snowball Creek. It's very powerful, very compact, very competitively priced, and I'm looking forward to giving it a test drive soon. See you on the next one.